Well, keeping on with the simple, what's that? Oh, the children, you an excuse to go with Becky and Miss Debbie? Is they're going to bring you guys a message like you haven't heard? Make sure you got some good stuff for the dads today. <laughs> so since we're on the, uh, the missions here, we have a, a missionary that's all the way from Amherst Alliance Church, but we may not think of it as being a missionary, but here he's left his home church to come here to feed us. And his very simplistic messages are, are absolutely um, packed with, with information from the smallest of the microorganisms right on up to the greatest of the huge galaxies and, and beyond in our world. Uh, God has a, a plan for all of us. And, and Mr. Bill Paul here has gave that message beautifully the last time he was here, and I'm sure it hasn't changed much. Uh, so please, uh, uh, sir, if you come on up and join us here, uh, we're thankful that you've uh, filled in today for Pastor Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, welcome, fathers. It's good to see you here today. Um, I, I appreciated the, the prayer that was offered a little while ago, uh, forefathers. I am going to also have, make some prayers for fathers, and, and in doing that, um, I, I would like to, first of all, have all the dads stand, and I'm going to pray for you. All the dads, if you would just stand, and I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for these dads that you have raised up, given them the power to be able to be a dad. Bless them, honor them, allow them to see your work in their lives and in their hearts and in their minds so that they can continue to be dads. Whether that's to their own children, to their grandchildren or their great-grandchildren, bless them, I pray in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Next, I would like to have all of you who have dads who are no longer with us, they've gone to glory, I'd like for you to stand as well as if your dad is no longer a part of your life, you may not even know where he is in the world, but if you would stand and join me as we pray for those dads who have gone or are no longer a part of our lives, okay? Father in heaven, Look at those who are standing before you this morning. Fill them with your peace, with your glory, that they may continue their lives remembering their dads, sorrowing for their dads, may not even know where their dads are. But fill them with your peace and your glory so that they can continue to honor you each and every day of their lives. In Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Be the best dad that you can be. Now, the comments and the, the, what I'm going to be sharing this morning is directed at dads. I confess that right up front. But I want you to know that these truths that we're going to be sharing this morning are equally applicable to every one of our lives. So I want you to ask the question, how can I apply these truths in my life? And if you will do that, even though the comments that I'll be making are directed at dads, you will be able to take something from this service that you can apply in your life in the days ahead. Ah, I do know how to work it. What do you think it takes to be a dad? What do you think it takes to be a dad? For every dad, there's probably a different set of answers. That's why God made us. He made us all different. Some, maybe most, would say, 
I don't have a clue. Now, particularly if you're a young dad, I don't have a clue. If you go to a bookstore or look online, you're going to find a lot of books, pamphlets, uh, all kinds of tools that dads can use to help them to be a good dad. And they certainly have their place, especially those tools that are written from a God world view. But probably most dads, like me, just wing it. I'll just do the best that I can do and hope it all works out. Some may say, I'll do it just like my dad did. Others may say, I will definitely not do it like my dad did. And, and, and you know, whichever way you go, there's still a whole lot of, you know, my kids don't act anything like I did. And so, what am, how am I going to be a great dad? How am I going to be a good dad? How am I going to be a dad? Church dads, Christian dads, are among those who struggle the most with this whole issue of being a dad. Does that surprise you at all? You, you, you think, you go to church, I'm a Christian I should have the least problems being a dad. But unfortunately, at least from a statistics point of view, church dads struggle the most. Fortunately, this doesn't have to be the case. We don't have to be that way. God wants his dads to be the very best that they can be. For each dad, that's going to be something different. Each child's needs are going to be different. What works for one child may not work for the next one, or the next one, or the next one. It's confusing, huh, Dad? Still, God wants his dads to be the best best that they can be, and he has a plan. A plan that makes it possible for you, Dad, to be the best dad that you can be. He wrote a letter. And he has this letter available for you so that you can know what his plan is for you to be the best dad that you can be. Now, there's no way that we can explore the entirety of his letter to dads this morning. But we're going to take some time this morning and look at some of the basics. We want to explore these basics so that we can have at least a foundation upon which to base our being the best dad that we can be. One of the images that appears throughout the Bible, throughout this letter, is the image of God's hand. Sometimes God raises his hand in blessing. Sometimes he raises his hand in judgment, in discipline. But any time we see God's hand, he is challenging us, he is encouraging us, 
He wants us to walk with him as good as we can. He wants us to learn to walk with him each and every day. He wants us to be making each day a way, a time to find out more about who God is because he wants us to know him. Well, this morning we will be using the hand. See, I skipped one. I... Did I miss something in my notes already? I did. Aha. God's Word in, in Psalm chapter 118, starting in verse 13. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted, up, lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done many things. We're going to be using the hand to help us understand God's plan for being the best dad that you can be. Look at your hand. Look at it. For those of you who don't have hands, I think everybody here does, I don't know about online. If you don't have a hand, picture one in your mind. If you can't see, don't have eyes anymore, picture one in your mind. But look at the hand. Move your fingers, your thumb, palm of your hand. It's an amazing thing. God gave it to you. This morning, we're going to use it to help us understand some of the basics of being the best dad that you could be. Okay, you can put your hands down. As God worked with his people, he constantly made himself known to them in different ways, in many ways. He wants us to get to know him. Look with me at Jeremiah 29, verse 13. I'll get there. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's one of the keys to being the best dad that you can be. To seek God with all your heart. Look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So you get to see it before I do because I can't turn my pages fast enough. Trust in the Lord. How? With all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your paths. You know, so often, yeah, we want God to direct our paths, but we forget to trust Him, to not lean on our own understanding, to acknowledge Him in all our ways. It's only then that He will direct our paths. God wants you to be the best dad you can be. The only way you can do that is to really get to know your heavenly dad. Really know him intimately, passionately, completely. We are going to be using this hand to help us keep in mind so that even after you leave here this morning, you look at your hand. Oh, yeah, I remember. Here are the things that are important for me to be the best dad that I can be. The better you know God, the better dad he will make you and you will become the best dad you can be. Did you get that? 
The better you know God, the better dad he will make you. You know, it kind of takes a lot of the pressure off. I don't have to do this alone. I don't have to figure it out on my own. God's Spirit who lives within me will make me the best dad that I can be when I've learned to trust him and know him. So let's take a look at our hand. First thing we're going to look at is the thumb. You know, it's an interesting thing, the thumb. You almost can't do anything with your hand without your thumb. If you've ever hurt your thumb and you can't use it, you realize how much you do use it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's imperative that we have a thumb that we can use. And so we are going to call Mr. Thumb confession. Our relationship with God began with confession. Everything hinges on confession. It starts with confession, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. Jesus, would you forgive me and be my Savior? That's where it starts. But that's just the start. The confession we want to practice as dads is a daily confession. Directly or indirectly, everything, everything, I mean everything, comes as a result of confession. Daily humbling ourselves to the absolute purity and righteousness of God. And confessing daily the best righteousness that I could ever muster is like filthy rags. Confession does involve that whole element of humility. Daily confession will allow God to come into your life and make you a dad worth remembering. God will continue to work in us so that we not only confess to God our mistakes, our failures, our sin, but confess our mistakes to our kids. That's part of being the best dad that you can be. There's a saying in pop culture today, it's been around for a long time, don't apologize. It's a sign of weakness. Let me assure you, that statement is right out of the pit of hell itself. Telling your kids, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Maybe one of the hardest things you ever do. But with God's help, as you confess to Him, He will help you confess to your children, to your wife. Becoming the best dad that you can possibly be. Confession is at the heart. Confession opens up a whole world of being able to get to know 
our heavenly dad. So we're going to go to the index finger now. T too often the index finger is, is used to point out somebody else's faults. <laughs> That's not God's plan. We want to take the index finger and, and help ourselves train our minds to think of it differently. What's the thumb? Confession. The index finger. Bible study. A key to knowing God. Now, reading God's Word, that's good, and I commend you if you read God's Word. Keep doing it. But just reading God's Word, it, it, it's not enough. We need to study it. What, what does the Scripture say? Study to show yourself approved unto who? Not one another. Proved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants us in his word, and he wants it to make, us, make it a part of who we are. We need to study to learn who God is. <coughs> we need to meditate on it to get his truths deep within our minds and our hearts. We need to practice it in our daily lives to make his nature our nature. So we don't have to think about what to do to be a good dad, a great dad. But we've made God's nature our nature so that we, it just flows out. because of our studying of God's Word. Do you find it hard to study God's Word? You know, it, it's, that's a very difficult thing for many people to do. To understand the words of God. And if you're like me and most other Christians in the world, you find it difficult to understand. But God doesn't want it to be that way. And so, from the very beginning, He gave us His Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to be our teacher, so that it is possible to understand His Word. Let's get that straight from the very beginning. It is possible. Don't be discouraged because you have trouble understanding God's Word. His Spirit who dwells within each one of His believers, each one of His children, each one of His dads, makes it possible for you to understand His love letter. He's also made it clear in His Word that in order to understand it, he wants us to get together and study it together. Oh, I don't know. I'm a man. I don't need anybody else to help me. What's that? Pride. What does pride do? Carries us right down. Humility, confession, and then we can come into God's Word and see, okay, I admit it. I need help. So you find a good Bible study to become a part of. And you get together with other Christians, with other dads. And you study God's Word together. Wow, I didn't know that. But that makes sense. I, that makes sense what God is saying to me. Yeah, it requires a little bit of humility, maybe a lot of humility, to be able to be willing to do it God's way. Being the best dad that you can be means that I need to become a confessor. I need to be involved in confession. 
I need to be involved in Bible study. The next finger that we're going to look about is the longest one. At least on my hand, it's the longest one. And we are going to help us remember worship. Worship is another key element in being the best dad that you can be. The more we become good at confessing our sin to God, to our kids, the better we become in reading God's letter to us, the better we can become at worship. You know, worship is a key part of the Christian experience. But I have found over the years that too many people equate worship with singing. That's a great way to worship, singing. But it is far from the only way to worship our God, our Lord, our Savior, our Creator. True worship is far more than just singing, as good as that is. True worship is a way of life. It is a moment-by-moment acknowledgement of who God is. Interestingly, True worship actually leads us into a greater understanding of who God is. As we worship Him, He teaches us more about Himself. Think with me for a minute. (laughs) The Pharisees in Jesus' day, they sang songs, the songs of David. Yet, what did Jesus call them? Whitened sepulchers. I guess they weren't worshiping God. They may have thought they were, but they weren't. Remember that widow in Jesus' day? She walked into the temple. She dropped her very last coin in the offering box. That's all she had. Jesus acknowledged that her act of worship was greater than anybody else's. Worship. The dad who prays all night with tears streaming down his face for his wayward child is worshiping God. The dad who pays his tithe and teaches his children to do the same is worshiping God. The dad who teaches his children the plan of salvation is worshiping God. The dad who apologizes to his children and asks for forgiveness is worshiping God. The dad who goes to work and makes sure everything is right, doesn't try to cheat anybody, doesn't try to get away with anything, is worshiping God. There's lots of ways to worship God. Worship Him in prayer. Worship Him in Bible study. Worship Him in song. Worship Him in teaching. Worship Him at work. Worship Him in private. Worship Him in public. Make worship a part of your everyday life. Let it become a part of your nature. Remember, Worship is not about how loud you sing. Worship is about how loud you live your life for Jesus. As you truly worship, 
you will get to know God better and better, and He will continue to work in you to make you the best dad you can be. The next thing we're going to look about is the ring finger. We're going to call this prayer. Basically, prayer is talking with God. Not just talking to God, but talking with God. Talking to Him, listening to Him. Praying with your Bible open in front of you is a great way to spend time in prayer. Because as you're praying, you can look down at God's Word and now He's speaking to you. The better you get to know God, the easier it will be to hear what He's saying to you. Many people find it of great help to have a tablet, whether paper or, or electronic, but to have something with them when they're praying so that they can record their thoughts while they're praying. And quite often those who do that may look back at what they've written two or three days or weeks or months ago and that was God speaking to me. Being able to write it down helps us to recognize when God is speaking to us. And I promise you, God is talking to you all the time. Are you listening? It's a shame that too often we don't realize that God is speaking to us. Talking to God, talking with God can take many forms. For instance, confession. We confess our sins to God and if we listen, he's going to say, I forgive you. Because Jesus paid the price. I forgive you. I've talked with many Christians. I've confessed. I've, I, I've apologized to God many, many times. And, and I said, well, if that's true, he's forgiven you. But I don't feel forgiven. I mean, you don't know what I've done. God says he's forgiven you because of what Jesus did on the cross. Believe it. Listen to him. Another way that we can do prayer is through worship. Worshiping God in prayer. Realizing who he is. When we worship God in prayer, what might he say if we listen? We might hear him reveal something new about himself that we, wow! Or he may just fill us with that overwhelming sense of awe of who he is as we worship him in prayer. In prayer, we can praise God. Praise God for revealing himself to us. Praise God for, who knows, just knowing God. 
Are you listening? How might he respond to that prayer of praise? I suppose he might smile. I'm glad you got it, Dad. In prayer, you might be thanking him for some blessing. What might he say back? You're welcome. Here's another blessing for you to enjoy. There's always the prayer of petition. We are a needy people. And God invites us to bring our petitions to him. You bring your petitions to him. If you're listening, what might he say? It's on the way. Wait for it. No, I don't think that would be good for you. I've got something better in mind. Are you listening? There's lots of different ways that we can pray. The key is spend time in prayer. Spend time in prayer. And God will make you the best dad that you can be. Let's move on to the little one. What, we should, what shall we call the little one to help us to remember? Let's review. What is it? Confession. And the last is fellowship. We label the little guy fellowship why? Because far too often in our Christian walk with God, fellowship doesn't get much importance. So that's why we label a little guy fellowship. Did I change it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Fellowship is very, very, very important if we want to be the best dad we can be. Fellowship is critically important if we want to know God the best we possibly can. And remember, in knowing God, He will make us the best dad that we can be. God has chosen to reveal Himself to work in the church when they are gathered together. Like we are this morning, whether it's here or online. We're gathered together. I'm not sure why God chose to do it with his gathered children, but that's the way his plan works. The Holy Spirit came to the gathered disciples. The early church grew as Jesus' followers gathered together in the homes of the believers. Later on, they gathered together in church buildings. Today, in some countries, we hear stories about the Christians gathering together in some secluded place so that they could worship God and not have to worry about persecution. But wherever the church is, it's gathered together. God knows that it's important that his children fellowship one with another. We gather together to worship, to pray, to encourage one another, to study the Bible, to serve the needs of others, to share the good news, to reach out to our communities, find out 
about what God is doing around the world and what those needs are around the world. All of these are reasons why we gather together so we can grow to know God better and become the dads God wants us to be. As you confess, as you study God's Word, as you worship God, as you pray, as you fellowship, and as you teach your children to do the same, God's Spirit within you will transform you into the best dad you can be. Whether that be grandpa, great-grandpa, Father, whether it be being a dad to your neighborhood kids, being a dad to your nieces and nephews, cousins, God wants you to be the best dad that you can be. God doesn't want you to compare yourself to other dads. He wants you to get to know Him, our Heavenly Dad, so that He can make you the best dad that you can be, that He wants you to be. Be that best dad. Confess. Study His Word. Worship Him. Pray to Him, with Him. Fellowship with His children. And He will make you the best dad that you can be. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. Father in heaven, thank you for sharing your plan so that we can be the best dads we can be. Fill us with your spirit. Transform us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.